Hey, Wayne Fox, if you're watching this video, you probably did something like this. You have a Lightroom library and you've been using color labels to indicate some type of status in your workflow. And it's something that, you know, you've defined yourself. That's the advantage of color labels. And you've discovered up in the metadata menu that color label sets are something that you can edit. So you've decided to edit those and give them names that are more meaningful. Obviously, initially, the name is the same as a color. And so the name is really pretty meaningless. I have another set here called review status. I, I think it might be a default set. I'm not positive. I don't like the retouching needed, I believe, should be the third step. So we're going to take that out and we're going to put it here. And good to use would be the fourth step. So we're going to take that out and we're going to put it here. And now we've got this nice set. I'm going to actually save that so that I have this set to keep. And we'll call it my, my, my uh, labels. But you notice as soon as I did that, I lost all my color labels. And that's exactly why you're watching the video is that you try to do this and all your colors are gone. Now notice one thing that where you had a color before, you now have a white label. What a white label means is that the IPTC metadata field label has something in it. But it means it doesn't match one of the five labels that is currently in your set. And if I actually look at one of these images and I look at that field in the IPTC data, it does say blue. So this was set to blue originally. And if I click on it, it's not one of those five. So blue is not one of these. Okay. So all we need to do to really get those back is a very quick procedure. Before I do that, I might mention that you can also set a label here by clicking on the label word. And in fact, you can type in any, any label you want, call this a sample label. And that will then turn the label to white, which means you have set a label, but it's not one of the current five. And notice when I do that, anything that I create as a custom label is a choice that I can click over in this. So you can have an, uh, several labels available besides the five you're using that can be stored. And so labels can be something you can use beyond just the color reference that's in Lightroom. But anyway, back to the problem at hand, we want to fix these. So all we need to do is show our filter bar, which we do by using the backslash key, which is the one above the return key. On the far right, we're going to say we want to search metadata based on label. And now you'll see that our colors are now there. So all we need is make sure our toolbar shows at the bottom. We just click each color on it. We select all and we click the corresponding color at the bottom. So there's blue, select all. This is green, so click green. This is purple. Select all, click purple. Red, select all, click red. And finally, we should have yellow somewhere. Yep, yellow, select all, click yellow. Now you notice that the new label descriptions we put are now showing as a label. If you use other label names, and this is what comes in handy with a white label, you'll notice that you can search based on those in this a label field up here. So you could use a lot of custom names and not worry about if they match with a color for various purposes in your workflow. But anyway, now if we go back and we turn this filter off and we now have our colors back, but the color now corresponds to the new description that we got it, that we gave it. So very quick to get the colors back on your images if you decide to use a custom set and they disappeared on you. And now that you understand a little more about labels, you might find some creative ways to use that label field beyond just storing a color, but even, even beyond storing the five in your default set, or even perhaps using multiple sets within Lightroom. Well, thanks for watching.